Welcome. Today we're going to talk about The Data Detective by Tim Harford. You know, no, it's silly. I didn't even bring it. Hang on. Let me grab it for my... That book right there. The Data Detective, Tim Harford. Yeah, endorsed by Malcolm Gladwell. Great. I always love Malcolm Gladwell sources anymore, though. He did one on uh, cycling and um, safe streets and the cyclist he brought in was Lance Armstrong. Not, you know, like someone, an expert in like cycling and safe streets, just some popular cyclist. It was like a uh, famous person bringing in the famous people friends to impress you. So anyways, but The Data Detective, that's a good book. Before we get into that, let's talk about ways to support the channel. So probably the best way to support the channel is to take one of my courses. You can do that by going to curtismichael.ca slash Skillshare. And you actually find links to them all below. The one you're most likely interested in if you're watching this is my uh, Zettel Casting course, which there's a link below. That's it. We stream on Fridays right now, 6 a.m. Pacific. Let's get started with the video. So The Data Detective by Tim Harvard. Really, we're bombarded by data every day. In BC, we talked about uh, COVID, and we're talking about COVID vaccination rates of the currently el eligible people which is a good, it's a good term because that's all we can really measure at this point. But it also means that we're excluding a whole bunch of people like any child under 12. Um, and are we using that same data when we talk about vaccination rates of things like measles, other stuff like that? Um, eligible people also excludes and has to people who can't take it because of immunocompromising, compromisation? I don't know, one of those words, you got it. Um, and this is what the data detective has helped us to really ask questions about like what type of data do we have um, and what like is the data we're getting really accurate and how is it affecting us now before we get into the meat of the review I want to talk about one topic uh, that Hartford brought up called manufactured doubt um, which is when any organization or person presents information that gets people concerned about topics that don't have anything to do with that person or organization so Hartford uses cigarette companies to cite this in the 50s as they funded research on other studies like climate change and other things with the purpose of pointing out that smoking wasn't the biggest problem we should be looking at. We see this today, but we call it fake news or misinformation or alternative facts. Um, it's a whole goal is to muddy up the waters with misinformation um, that probably doesn't matter so that we just don't pay attention to the things that do matter. If you want to read more about that, another good book uh, dealing with that is The Death of Expertise, which I have reviewed and will be linked above. So with that concept out of the way, manufactured doubt, which I really liked that concept, let's dive into the rest of the ideas that I, I'm going to highlight out of Hartford. I'm, I was always never highlighting all of them, but let's look into some of the other ideas. So one big trap we fall into is either coming up with uh, data that confirms or refutes information we don't believe. So either that supports us or gives us reason to not believe what we don't believe. Uh, if you're a coffee drinker, you don't want to hear any information that suggests uh, your habit is one that's bad for you. Right? I am a coffee drinker. And it's hard. you don't want to read information that says it's bad for you. And one big thing Harford tells readers there is that you need to stop and think about how the data makes you feel. If it makes you feel good about an idea you already have, some belief you already have, then maybe you need to stop and look up information that makes you feel the other way. Next up, what's your personal experience? So one of the rules I stick to is I don't argue about zebras. No zebratic arguments. Uh, I'll tell this to people I'm talking with. Sorry, I don't talk about zebras anymore. So living outside of Vancouver, a zebra as an animal is a very rare thing. And when I ride my bike around, I see lots of horses, lots of cows, and I have yet, never seen a zebra. It is certainly possible that sometime in Chilliwack I'll actually see a zebra, but it's essentially impossible. So the thing is, news and most things around us only want to talk about zebras. Uh, news isn't even actually about informing us about things. It is merely about eyeballs. Death of Expertise talks about that and how that transitioned to news. News used to tell you what you need to know. Now it tells you what it thinks will keep your attention. In light of this, look at the experience of those around you. Uh, While well, major events like terrorism, they're scary. Um, almost none of us know anyone that's been a victim of such an event. We're all in far more danger daily from driving cars, from like going to the bathroom. Like you're more likely to be injured going to the bathroom than in a terrorist event. So why are we scared of it? Uh, and I even think of this when people say, oh, like kids and all these bad things that happen to them. Basically nothing bad happens to children. 
what really happens is the news highlights anything bad. Um, so, you know, when they have a story about something that is, it's horrible and something bad happens to a kid, um, they should also highlight, you know, three billion children played today safely and nothing happened. So it's always worthwhile keeping in mind what your experience is and what the tr reality is for that. Next up, what aren't they telling you? Uh, on this site, in my videos, I've talked about the jam study, which basically showed if you gave people more choices, then they chose, they bought less jam. If you gave them less choices, they kind of narrowed their field of view, and they said, hey, this is, uh, they made it, they bought more jam if you did that. You'll find the study talking about many places, even like the Harvard Review. So did you know that looking at all the studies that look at choice, what it comes out to is there's essentially, essentially no variation uh, based on choice. That's it. Um, yeah, the number of choices don't matter. Um, so don't just take the published statistics because journals are predisposed to publish zebras again, things that change, want to change your preconceptions. Um, when the follow-up study shows, hey, that thing that we thought was like amazing and wild, it's not actually true. What we all thought was true is actually true. Um, you don't actually hear from those studies because they're not novel. They're not zebras. So you often don't even see the published even retraction sometimes or the published like uh, refutation of a uh, study. Next up, who's missing? Okay, I read a whole book about this, but who's missing called Invisible Women. Uh, I didn't do a video on it, but I did actually write about it. So there'll be a link to that above. And Invisible Women basically talked about all the times that women are excluded from everything, from women presenting and heart attacks differently um, so that they totally get missed often to women, uh, women's needs not getting accounted for in transit system design because mostly men design them. Um, and so that's one thing to ask when you look at any type of research, who is missing a lot of, uh, psychology research, especially, but a lot of research basically takes college students because college students are in abundance at the research facilities, colleges. Um, so then we basically have a fairly strong monoculture, uh, especially, you know, a couple of decades ago of white men in college doing studies and then generalizing that to everyone and white men are not really everyone, despite what many of them want to think. So if you're published claims, make sure you check to who was actually included in the study and who was excluded. Next up, data visualization. Beware of it. This is the infographic. They're very popular. They look really pretty and they often disguise bad, bad data. Um, there's an interesting one he showed in here, uh, where it looked at the Gulf War and basically they just changed the color of the graph and changed the title. And you went from like, oh my goodness, so many people are dying to, oh, look, people were dying, but it's getting so much better. So. Just be aware, look at data visualization askance, just because it may lead you astray. Uh, now the biggest one that Harford says, kind of like the golden rule that at the end that kind of overarches everything is be curious. That's it. Be curious, especially when you're talking to uh, other people who disagree with you, start asking them why. Uh, like, why do you believe this? What's the backing to your beliefs and really dive into it. There's kind of I suppose there's three things, but two main things we hope happens. Number one is maybe you learn something because the person really does know what they're talking about. Number two is maybe they go, wait, I don't know this as well as I thought. And so they say, you know what? I'm not, you know, I don't know this as well as I thought. And maybe you're right. Maybe we need to dig into this more together. And hopefully in those two scenarios, you both come out better people for it. And I guess there's the third where they just, you know, you just wasted your time because they're just going to keep yelling at you about stuff. So hopefully you don't encounter that. Uh, there are one or two of those people around here that I just ignore and don't talk to about it. Tell them that I don't talk to uh, their accountants. And I say, well, you know what? I'll talk to the doctors about doctor stuff. And if I have an accounting question, I'll ask you. So the question, final one, should you read Data Detective by Tim Harford? I'm going to say yes. Uh, you should read this. I didn't cover all the rules, but they were all really good. And it was an enjoyable, well-written book. Uh, alongside it, I also recommend Invisible Women and The Death of Expertise. Those are both really good books that touch on some of the same subjects that are covered in here. That's really it. If you like the video, thumbs up below. If you love to subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know what happened, but you should probably turn off your notifications on YouTube anyways, because you got better stuff to do, like read books. If you want to support the channel, best way is to take one of my courses. You can do that uh, if you go to curtismichael.ca slash Skillshare. They'll just take you over to Skillshare where you can sign up and find my courses, or there's links directly below. If you want to talk about books with me, we have a book club. At least as of today, we do. We'll see if nobody shows up on today, then there's no more book club. So I'll mention that in the next video. But you can go to Discord, find the book club there. We're talking at 1 p.m. Pacific today about uh, the Data Detective. Have a good one.